Hi folks! Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and we recently sold our suburban home and moved to a tiny nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. This week, we're on holiday on the very north coast of Scotland. We take you on some of our adventures on the famous North Coast 500 route, hunting for Stone Age artefacts. Exploring ruined castles. Foraging for wild mushrooms. And much more. Join us as we take a wee break from... Live in the sky life. We're in the car because we're going on holiday! Yay! We haven't been on holiday since last summer, so this is amazing. It's our summer holiday, we're very excited. We're going to the north coast of Scotland and we're going to take you with us. Pit stop in Dingwall to get some provisions from the supermarket. We've just bypassed Inverness. We went on the A9 very briefly, which is normally the road we go south on. When we used to go to Betty Hill from Fife, you sat on the A9 for a long time, for a few hours, and it was the bit that's really quite boring, to be honest. And because we've come from west and north, this route is totally different. It's just really, really nice, the whole route. I'm excited because we're going to stop off in Leg soon, and there's a cafe which has possibly the best cake display in Scotland. I'm hoping anyway it lives up to my memories. We'll see you later on in the journey. cafe now to stop for some coffee on the way but we're also going to have a little look at what is possibly Scotland's tiniest house. Local legend tells that the wee house was built in 1824 by poacher Jock Brun who was gifted land by a local laird. Brun is said to have built the house to mark his new status as a landowner but died shortly afterwards when he shot himself in the foot while out hunting. Many people have heard this story and believe it to be true. However, the real origins of the Wee Hoose are slightly different. It was built around 20 years ago as a float for the Laird Gala. It was taken to the island by boat at the end of the festivities and has since become a landmark loved by locals and tourists alike. Slange with coffee? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you go there. It's a Biscoff brownie. And it's all for you. Mm hmm. You said you didn't want anything sweet. No, I want something savoury. Mm. Looks yummy. That's over Sarah's shoulder there, that one. It's called Ben Clibberick and it's a Munro, one of the largest hills in Scotland. Sarah and I climbed that last year. What was the year before? Two years ago, I think. Two years ago? Yeah, that's a slog, that Munro. You gotta go right from the back there, all the way up and then to the point and then back down again. It's a big long walk. <laughs> but excellent fashion sense. Hope's that way. We're going that way, which means that we're going the opposite way to hope. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. I've never done it though. <laughs> Wow, 
right uh, to the north coast of Scotland. This is the holiday cottage we're staying in behind us and look at that view. <laughs> In we go! First time in a couple of years in this one. It's so strange coming back in here. And nice as well. Lovely big kitchen. Jack knows this place. He's been here a few times. This is the living room. The view is insane. It's got to be the, one of the best views of anywhere in Scotland. It's stunning. Hey, hey Jack. It's a beach. Can you see the beach? And this is the little room at the front that we can sit in. There's a little lounger seat here. But I won't hang around, I'll show you more. That's just a store cupboard. There is another sort of room here, which is like a living room. And it's still got the old organ in there as well. We'll go up the stairs. It's a croft house. See the... Not easy for me in here. I'm always sort of on the slant, right? This is the master bedroom and the view again. Lovely. And then there's another two bedrooms actually. It's just us staying here, but uh, you can't have more. This is two single beds in here. This is another large bedroom. Oh, how many rooms are? It's a beautiful place. That's the pub. The pub, yeah. The pub's just there. Pub view room. Walking distance, very easily. And this is the bathroom. There's a shower and a bath. It's quite small, actually, the bathroom. And this is where we come on our holidays, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We're going from one very old cottage to another old cottage. Mm -hmm. Right, let's uh, get the car unpacked and a get a drink in hand and get on with being on holiday. Excellent. Seems that no matter where we go, there's horses out the living room window. What an amazing place to go on your horse though, eh? Beautiful. We've just woken up quite late after a nice long sleep and they're having a coffee now. One of the most amazing things about this cottage, apart from all of this, is that there's wild mushrooms growing in the back garden. <laughs> St George's mushrooms at this time of year. It's quite late for St George's mushrooms. However, hopefully there'll still be some that are edible. I hope they're not too far gone. It's time to go foraging in the garden. <laughs> are good and we'll be eating for my breakfast and these mushrooms are over and they've got maggots in them which is perfectly normal and natural except I don't want to eat them so they're going back in the garden so they can drop their spores and hopefully be even more mushrooms next year. It's happening again. It's always in my ear. You know it's <laughs> So we set off on foot to hunt for Stone Age treasures, napped flints from the Mesolithic period. I've made a full video about this on my other channel, Dirty Secrets of Scotland, and I'll put the link in this video's description. But first, check out this abandoned wee cottage before the hunt begins. 
road you can hear behind us is the North Coast 500. Well, I say behind us, it's just up there. This river is the River Naver, and this is an abandoned building, which is really cool and we'll show you in a minute. We're going to go and show you some Stone Age artifacts, I hope. We're looking for flints from the Mesolithic period, the Stone Age. How cool is that? Oh, and a broch. Oh yeah, and there's a broch as well. But first, let's check out this old building. This is going to be cool. Wow. Amazing. Old tin. I won't take this, I'm just showing you. Oh wow, look at that. That's lovely. Look at that mirror. Crazy on the panel. Lovely. I won't go in. It's not my uh, property to go into. Isn't this stunning? Apple blossom. One of the things you don't get from watching videos is the smell and it's that is so perfumed, it's beautiful. Absolutely lovely. There are sheep over there. And so Jack's on his lead. When there are no more sheep, or there's no animals around at all, we can let them off. Not until there's no more livestock around. Hey buddy, you just have to wait, I'm afraid. Perhaps that's the rules. Same old bottles there as last year. I'm glad that no one's come and taken any of this away. have come off the beach behind us there and now we're starting to climb up the hill to get to the Broch. What is that, Iron Age? Yeah. About 2,000 years old. So it's the remnants of a really, really old building and it's unique to Scotland. Mm. And it's just started to rain, which is yeah. not unique to Scotland, but yeah. we do do it quite well here. Monty Python fans out there. Find some juniper berries. Find juniper berries! walked up here in the sunshine and then as soon as we got to the brook it started raining. 
We can see from here the cottage that we're staying in. It's just nice up here anyway, even though it's raining. It is. It's a bit annoying that there was rain, but it's Scotland, it's just what happens, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, lovely broch. Very old building, this. Mm -hmm. Down there is the old settlement of Bale Marquet, or Margaret's Town, and it's very old indeed. There's round houses down there like that one, and all over the place. Most of Margaret's Town is a scheduled monument, so you can't dig there or take anything away. But there's a part of it that isn't scheduled, and that part is where we're going to go and see if we can find some Mesolithic flints, worked tools. We might not find any, but we won't find out unless we try. What do you reckon? Give it a go. In the rain. Yeah. It'll just pass over, eh, Jack? Mr. Bright Ideas. I'm going to go on down this huge hill. Ready for this? Three, two, one, go! Way, Jacko! Woohoo! Way, way, woohoo! Your turn. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> <laughs> well done, that was funny. This is a chambered cairn, so there would have been actually someone in there. That would have been someone's remains, that stone would have been on top. But it might have had grave goods, which is probably why it's been opened like this, probably ages ago in antiquity, but that's what it is. So I don't know the exact age of this, but I would imagine probably Iron Age at least. Maybe had something to do with the broch up there. Well, it didn't take us too long to get down here because we ran down as you saw. And I've taken my waterproof off because, well, it stopped raining. And now it started raining again. So they still got our waterproof on because she's sensible. And um, we're going to go and see if we can find some Mesolithic flints, Stone Age tools. How cool is that? So here we are, this is the area where the Stone Age tools are. Just little flints, little piece of cutting blades and scrapers. And you just have to get your eyes to the ground and look for them. The ones that we find today will have been buried in the sand dunes for years. Is that one there? No. <laughs> Not that easy. Well, you never know. If we find any, we'll report back. Eyes down. Sarah just went to me. I think I've got one, and I went, I think I've got one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one. Uh -oh. Is it a little blade? Yeah, I thought so. This is the one that I just found. It's part of a blade as well. So there's three now. But that's amazing to think that they're Mesolithic. What is that, 12,000 years old? Let's keep looking and see what else we can find. We do send these to the National Museum of Scotland, by the way, despite the fact that they're made of stone, um, they're still regarded as treasures. So We'll see how many we can find and send them to them. They're just popping up all the time now. And you can see the face on there, where it was chipped off the core. And then straight down the middle, that'd be a little blade. That's beautiful. And you can see, really see the difference between this and the natural stone. The natural stone's all granite and quartz. But that is no mistaking that that's chert. Check this one out. Oh, she's got a good one. Oh, that's a beauty. That's the best one of the session so far. 
That's lovely. Sarah's hunting for Mesolithic blades and Jack is hunting for attention. Oh yeah, looks like it. Take it out. Look how smooth it is. Yep. Wow, scraper. Lovely scraper. Oh, that's a beauty. That's still sharp. Well, it will be. Beautiful. Stunner. Got a few now. Sarah's doing better than me, as usual. Closer to the ground, aren't I? <laughs> well, that was fun. We found a fair few. Sarah found more than me, as yeah. always. But he was doing all the filming. So everything you've just seen, he was filming while I was looking. <laughs> we did all right though, both of us. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look what you've got. So this is what she's got here. I love the noise they make. They make a great noise. It's my one that's the outer edge of the flint. So it's all rough there. And the inside is all smooth because it's been chipped away. That's a blade. Potential blades. So they're kind of long and thin usually with a slight curve to them and then um, they've either got two faces or like this one three faces that sort of come to a point so we think those are little blades I think I've got a couple of scrapers as well yeah that looks like a big scraper there yeah. so that's my favourite one because that's just such a beautiful colour as well that's lovely it is it's absolutely stunning and here's mine this one looks like a blade I reckon it's got so many different cuts on it and then from the the percussion on the back. This is the biggest one. I think this has been exposed for a long time though because it's worn a bit. But you can still tell that it's been chipped off. I think this is part of a blade. This is a scraper, I'm sure of it. Used for scraping furs, getting all the sinew off the back of the fur so they could make them into clothes. But yeah, we took them to the museum before and they were really interested in taking them from us, but we're here waiting to hear back if they're actually going to be taken as treasure or not. That was a great adventure, wasn't it? It was cool. It's always fun. Yeah. Last time we did this, we kept saying it's just mind blowing how how old these things are. And I have a theory as well, like where we were, it's up overlooking the beach and overlooking the river. And I think they just chose to work there. Just sitting looking out over the water and chipping away. I mean if you're gonna work somewhere, why not work in the most beautiful part of that area? And that by far is. We're in the car and we're going on an adventure. We've come from the west coast, actually we've come from the islands. We've driven all the way to the north coast, which is where we are now, and we're about to drive to the east coast to go to a castle because Sarah... Loves castles. Loves castles. <laughs> go on an adventure. It's a little bit windy! 
This is the ruin of Castle Sinclair Guernigo, one of the earliest seats of Clan Sinclair. This castle is so cool, and Sarah's in her element. She loves castles, she always has. It's so beautiful. And I'd have the drone up right now, except for the fact that it's howling a gale. We've had to try and find a bit of the castle, but there's no wind and there isn't a place. This is as good as it gets. And I've had to put the fluffy microphone on as well, but this is such a beautiful place. It's lovely. It was built in two sections, the first being Castle Guernigo, probably between 1476 and 1496, by the second Earl of Caithness. The castle was then expanded in 1606 by the fifth Earl of Caithness, who also tried to change the name to Castle Sinclair by an act of parliament. However, as both the names were written down, the castle has been known as Sinclair Guernigo ever since. This has to be one of the most dramatic castles in Scotland, with the walls rising directly out of the cliffs and a precipitous drop down to the ocean below. We found a spot to sit out of the wind for a little second or two. It's crazy windy in all directions. This is awesome. I love castles by the sea because they just get so eaten away by the salt and the water and all the storms. I can understand why this is on the top 100 list of monuments most at risk. <laughs> the weather's pretty harsh here, even on a, a nice day, but it does make for some very dramatic ruins. So Sarah's yeah. happy place. Let's go and explore the rest of it. We're in this little cave at the side now. It's such an amazing place. It's so crazy. We didn't even know this was here. We knew about the castle, but we didn't know about this little alcove. Obviously, it's the harbour where the boats used to come in for the castle. And Jack wants to run on the beach. I'll show you what we're looking at now. It's so so lovely. Yeah. It's amazing. It's like it's kind of a bit um, unnerving. Obviously, these towers have been made by people, but if you just walk down, it kind of reminds you of something like trolls or yeah. some strange landscape. It does. Um, I said that, it's a bit Tolkien-esque, isn't yeah. it? And yeah. I'm always a bit like in two minds about things like this. There's places on Sky like the Fairy Glen, hmm. where people move rocks around and make patterns, and yeah. it's kind of frowned upon, especially because they leave lots of trinkets and stuff there as well. This feels better because obviously we're not taking the rocks away from the place no. and we're not adding anything. No. And once they fall down, they'll just still be in the same place they were anyway. So exactly. this is a little bit different. Anyway, let's have a look around. We've got more to see. We've just arrived in John O'Groat's car park and we're going to take Jack out for a wander just now and take you to the famous sign. But I just noticed there's a little bird down there and it's jumping up at the number plates of cars, the front number plates of cars, and pecking the dead bugs off. It's like a banquet. It's amazing. Now, I, could, I can't film it though because I'll just be filming people's number plates and that's not cool. <laughs> but you just have to take my word for it. It's just down there. It's a sparrow. It's jumping up, 
pecking off these uh, dead flies from number place. A smart little bird, huh? Yeah. Kentucky flight chicken, does that work? It doesn't work. <laughs> This is Johnny Groves, as you can see from the sign behind me, and the famous sign that we just went and queued up in front of to get a picture. But this is basically it. There's a few coffee houses, and uh, it's not the most amazing place. Also, it's not the most northerly part of the mainland in Britain either, because that is actually over there. Genuinely, I think you should get that for your studio door. Okay. Oh, right. Back in the car. Mm hmm Back in the shelter. Yeah. Your hair's <laughs> wild. <laughs> There's a lot more stuff here than the last time I came to visit John Groot. Yeah, cashing in. Big time. The last time I came here, there was a couple shops and there was a little stall selling machine-made Starbucks drinks, which my friend Chris, who I was traveling with, loved. This is a lot nicer. At least there's some independent places. Mm -hmm. And they were nice. And they gave Jack a treat. We're going to go to Dunnett Head now. The actual most northern part of mainland The actual most mainland northern Britain. part of mainland Britain. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. has just been deafened by Jack for the 17 billionth time today, <laughs> which means we've stopped. Because we've gone to Dunnet Head. So we really are at the most northerly point in mainland Britain now. Let's go and check it out. In the spring and summer, this is a great place to watch seabirds coming into their nests. Although I think most of them were hunkered down, hiding from the strong winds today. Normally when you see a sign, it will give you some information about the area that you're in. This sign is telling us that it is very windy here. Here on Dunnet Head, we are 2.35 miles further north than we were at John O'Groats. Surprisingly, we are also further north than Copenhagen, Moscow and even Mongolia. Although thankfully, we have a slightly milder climate. Well, that was wild, wasn't it? Oh, yep. <laughs> Crazy. It only seems to be getting more and more windy as the day goes on. Absolutely. So it's quite a relief to get back in the car. I feel like I've been beaten up. But that wild orchid at the top of the hill, right at the trig point, right at the most northerly point, officially most northerly point on the British mainland, one purple wild orchid sitting there. So you got a few pictures, didn't you? Yeah, it was beautiful. You're going to paint it? Yeah, I'd love to. I painted one orchid before, but a different type. So yeah, I'd love to paint that one as well. There was just one. Amazing. The northernmost orchid in mainland Britain. We're getting our heads around that, that phrase now, aren't we? Yeah, we're getting our heads around it now after I've screwed it up for most of the day. Uh, okay, well, uh, let's head back to our cottage now, back in Betty Hill, mm -hmm. and uh, probably chill out after being beaten up by this wind all day. <laughs> Glass from Willie's past. Yep, I played in there with a band that I was in many years ago. That was when we drove up from playing a gig in Leeds the night before. And then the next gig was uh, on Orkney, and the night after that was in there in Skinandes. Another day, another beach. This one's a bit closer, in fact. We just walked here from our accommodation. This is actually the closest beach to us. Irony being that it's called Far Beach. So uh, let's go down there and check it out. It's not far. 
It's not far. <laughs> We're also going to look for some mushrooms along the way because I discovered them last year, some more St George's mushrooms, so we'll see if there's any that are worth picking. Let's have a look. See any? It's pretty wild today. Yeah. Oh yeah. Once you see one, you start seeing them everywhere. St George's mushrooms. Most of the mushrooms were too far gone unfortunately. However, my plan was to pick them at the end of the week, then put them in the long grass at the side of our barn at home. Hopefully this would allow the spores to take hold and we could have these mushrooms in the future at Skylife Cottage. <laughs> Spaniels in his absolute element here. He loves it here. Hey pups! He's got a little river that comes out onto the beach. He's got the big sands and he's got the big waves, although he's not going in there. Jack Spaniels is always living his best life. Hiya buddy! Hiya pal, you having fun? Go get mum! Now this wee cafe used to be the local store, which sold everything from bags of self-raising flour to plumbing parts, electrical devices, logs, compost, paint, stripper, booze, in fact anything you could imagine, and some things that you might not, it was just absolutely awesome. It also belonged to friends of mine Ray and June, in fact the building still does, but now it's a nice wee cafe so it's not all bad that it's not the store anymore. However, I do miss popping in there to buy loads of random stuff, including my fishing permit. It's also my main inspiration for how I'm going to decorate the studio in the buyer, but more on that later. Thank you so much for watching our video we really hope you enjoyed that little snapshot of our time away in betty hill if you do enjoy our videos please do give us a like leave us a comment and subscribe to our channel it really helps us out and it's free to do absolutely while we're on the subject of subscribing i just thought i'd give a quick reason that all these youtube channels ask you to do that youtube works on algorithms and algorithms are fed off the number of subscribers and the number of views so by subscribing you really are helping the channel it's free so please go ahead and do so 
If you want to support this channel, you can do so over on Ko-fi where you can leave us a donation, we can get a cup of coffee, we can get a treat for Jack, or we can just contribute to the running costs of this channel. And if you want to support us monthly, you can do that over on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of our patrons out there. You really help this channel. Links to all these are in the video description below. Hello. Thanks again for watching. As usual, we will see you next week. Ah. We won't see them next week after that performance. We're leaving our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see when we're living the sky life. Living the sky life. Jackson is happy place. He's been here a few times. Is he doing a poo? I think he's having a poo. Who would have you? What a place though to go to the loo, eh Jack? <laughs>